Hey everyone. Now in the last video, I told you that I got back into programming the Spectrum Analyzer that I started a couple of years ago. So in this video, I'll just give you an update on progress, which is pretty slow because I'm not a programmer, although I think I'm getting better anyway. So I'll just show you what I'm up to. Right, so here's how it currently looks. What you do is set up an input and just press it and off you go. So there's a bunch of radio stations there. Now one of the things I made sure of with this is that I've got keyboard shortcuts because I don't like using the mouse, it just slows you down. So I could have done that by doing input and then F1 for the first one in that list there. So even though I can use keys, so I can undo the stuff with the keyboard, um, I'll show you on the mouse so you can see on the screen what I'm doing. So as you can see, I've got the input device here and that name here just came from the serial number of the RTL device. But anyway, now I've got max hold, which, you know, simple but required. I've got peak search, which I've got the preset button, which brings back the whole image to fit in there. And if I just narrow that down, you can see these move live with it. So you've got your frequency and power. Okay, so I can switch to hack RF. And you can see it there, but I've still got work to do because that's just that minimal bandwidth, not the whole bandwidth. One of the other things I did, which you might notice here, is the DC spike that's normally up here is now down here. That's because I did some uh, signal processing to reduce that, but I'll get to that later. Now I've got issues, because look, if you go back to the RTL, it doesn't always work. So that's one of the problems that I've got to work on. Now, although that seems pretty basic, which it is, it actually took a lot of time for me to do that because, you know, I had to figure a lot of stuff out. So I'm gonna show you now some of the things that I had to figure out along the way. Now I'll start with this thing that you've seen before. Now it's 3D, and what you can see is it's made up of lines. The pause function isn't happening on this one, but you can see it's just a whole bunch of lines that show the uh, frequency plot there. And I've got some peak search and some max hold there, but it's not gonna be like that because the problem is, well, there's a lot of problems. It doesn't look good for starters, but you can see the colors mix when they overlap and it all sort of goes to white eventually. So if you see that, see all this white here? And it's really hard to see, so it wasn't ideal. So one of the things I tried was a surface plot. But this is really bad. You can see, first of all, it just doesn't look good. It looks spiky and weird. And also, as I move that around, see how jerky it is? It's not really able to do that live. So I didn't like the surface idea. So what I thought then was making all the data represented by a bunch of cubes or rectangular boxes. And this is my first effort at making a cube. And as you can see, I've got the vertices all messed up and the triangles go through itself and there's no color, it's just pretty bad. But that's how these things start. Then after a whole lot of mucking around, I got my vertices right and managed to get the um, colors happening. So I got blue for, for the bottom and red for the top. But even that took a bit of doing because I was putting code in the wrong places and good old chat GPT didn't have a clue, just went round in circles. But anyway, I finally got there and that's my first little box on there. Okay, so after that, I thought I need a few of these just to test it. And I came up with these three here. And that's not based on any data, it's just three uh, static boxes here. But as you can see, you can see what's wrong with this. It's supposed to be blue at the bottom red if it's really high up here, and corresponding shades down here, but it took a while to get that figured out. But after a while, I got that figured out. So this is what I was after here. So the lower it is, you know, the more, the more it's blue. So you can see where I'm going with this. Still only the three, but it got me started. So okay, time to move into RTL data. So I got this, and you can see how slow it is. I'm just zooming out here, and it's taking forever. If I try and rotate it, Still catching up with the zoom I did before. You can see how slow this is as it does a, uh, oh God, look at that. I've zoomed in. It's just kind of stuck. The whole thing shit itself. You can see that's not right, okay? It's finally turned around a bit. So that's not gonna work. But then after a bit of optimization, I got it a little bit better here. So you can see this is one bunch of samples here. It's not moving, but it's from the RTL device. And you can see as I move it around, it's nice and fluid. So that's getting closer to where I wanna be. So the next step, which I haven't done yet, will be to do all the history lines and update that live and see if it can do it. Now, one thing I wanna make sure of is that I test these on slow computers, not just the fast one here. So I've got a slow laptop and another thing in there, and if they work on that, then they should be pretty right. Now, another thing I've got is the waterfall display, because that's gotta be there. And this has a lot of work to do. You'll see this sort of flickers, that's to do with the coloring and that, but I'll get to it. You can see it's live RTL data, they're just radio stations there. The scales don't mean much, but you can see that I've sampled this at uh, 2048 because that's where it goes up to. And on this HD screen, which is 1920 by 1080, there's not much point going more than that, unless you want to zoom in and stuff like this, which will which will happen. So I'll have some sort of zoomy type stuff as well, but uh, that's just another step along the way. 
Now another thing I wanted to do while I was making this was have a vertical interface rather than just being stuck with a horizontal one. So the controls basically just go down the bottom. Eventually I want a full screen mode where I can just do that full screen. But you know, I want that there because I'm doing stuff over here and I still want to see it. And as I said, it's got uh, keyboard stuff here. So I can do that. X for maximum, because no one else was going to use the letter X. Uh, P for peak, space, frequency, span, amplitude, all that sort of stuff. Uh, input, hack RF, the next one, bang. Turn the max off, turn the peak off. You get the idea. Now one of the things I've got to fix up is this X and Y value. So it displays wherever the mouse is. The problem is, when it's actually going, it kind of disappears. So that's something I've got to do. So you can see what I mean. Like you want to hold that and I just want to put the mouse over it and find its value. That'll be coming as well. Now as for going between horizontal and vertical, it's a bit of a problem because if I go vertical here, it doesn't come out properly. So I've got to reinitialize stuff. Just another thing on the list of things to do. Now for the colors, I might have some different color maps here because different colors serve different purposes. Some are good for black and white printouts, some are good for different types of data. So I'm not gonna reinvent these colors, I'm just gonna use some that are already available and have been thought about. Because one of the options I'll have is an image export. So I've got one here that's exported as a PNG file and I've got another as SVG, so you can zoom right in on that, of course, because it's SVG. So anyway, there's gonna be some image export options as well. Now as for the menus, I've got sub menus of the main buttons here, like frequency, span, amplitude, the input as you saw. One of the things we're gonna have is a mode button. So I'm gonna have a Wi-Fi mode that has functions that are specific to Wi-Fi because one of the things I really need this for is for a good Wi-Fi spectrum analyzer because there's just none out there, quite frankly. So that's, that's gonna work, but that menu system is probably the biggest challenge I've got here. It's just a pain, but it's, it's getting there, I'm working on it. Here's a little bit of the menu manager class here. It's not got much in it, but it's just a pain to get that talking to the main program, which is fucking somewhere. This shit, this is how big main, main is at the moment. And I've got another problem here too, because most of the display code is in main when it should be back in that 2D class, because I'm gonna to have to do a lot more of that for the 3D class. So back on here, if I go to 3D, here's those lines that I told you about, and they're, they're pretty shitty, like I said, it, overlaps there and goes white and they're just hard to see. Another problem is now that I've had that 3D on for a few seconds, if I go back to 2D, you'll see it initially has a delay like it's catching up with what happened. So you'll see, see that there? It's catching up to where it was if it doesn't crash and it got there. So there's some problems in there that I've got to fix up as well. Now going back to this, to put the frequency in, let's say you want the center frequency, you want to be able to press this. Let's say you want, I don't know, 50 meg. You normally go 50 meg on an actual spectrum analyzer, a real one. So what I want to do, obviously I'll have the 5.0 and then M for meg, G for gig, you know, H for hertz, K for kilohertz. But I've got to make that work. And I'll show you how far I've got with that. Here it is here. A little button there so I can type stuff in, 0, 1, 2, put a dot and do whatever. And that puts it into a buffer. And of course I can go backspace and move them back. And also I can use the keys here which do the same sort of thing. So again, I can use keyboard or the keypad but I've got to integrate that yet into the main program, which all sounds easy until you have to do it and then something doesn't work and you get the shits and it just time ticks away. So I'm putting every spare minute I've got into this because no one wants this more than me. So I am progressing with it, but just letting you know that I haven't forgotten about it. Now someone in the comments asked if it could demod stuff so you could listen to radio. And the answer is no, and it never will because it, the purpose of it is a spectrum analyzer not a radio. But one thing I am planning on doing is doing a handoff from Top Dog Spectrum Analyzer over to GQRX. So let's say you follow a peak here or something, it can control GQRX. So up here you've got the uh, remote control settings. So GQRX can be told what frequency to tune to and what demod and stuff. But the analyzer itself won't do that. It'll just pass it off to someone else. So that's something that's planned for the future. Now another feature I've got on there is the BIOS T option for these RTL adapters where that's where it puts five volts out on the antenna port so you can power antennas. And I've got one there so I can show you that happening. So on the roof there, I've got that little satellite antenna which only comes on when you give five volts to it. So that's what I'm gonna connect up to this RTL device. So in the garage, I've got this mess of shit here. This cable here with the little red marker on is the microwave antenna. So the others are dis the disco antennas that don't need five volts going up there. So I've got that there and I'll just pass that over the network with USB IP. Okay, so if I select that device, input RTL FFT, you'll see the device here is called satellite. And normally if this menu was working, underneath RTL FFT or any of these buttons, you'll have sub menus for features relevant to them. But for now, I'll just press B for BIOS T, so I'll 
enable that and you can see some, some stuff came in here. So you can tweak the surrounding and get to that and adjust gain and stuff. But uh, you know, put your max hold and your peak on, you'll, you'll see some stuff there. But you get the idea, it's got that functionality there so you can use antennas that require that five volts. Okay, so that's pretty much it. It's not ready, but I haven't forgotten about it and I just wanted to give you an update of where I am with it and some of the challenges that I've got. So anyway, I'll continue working on that and hopefully get it out there soon. And when I do, it'll be on GitHub and open source and free and hopefully be used by everyone. So anyway, that'll do for now. Till next time, take it easy.